on the court. The diamond, the track, the gridiron. Follow the adventures of Frank Farrell, the athlete. In our last episode, Frank Farrell and his Trent High Bearcats defeated the Lawrence Wolverines by a sensational kick during the last minute of play. On leaving the dressing room after the game, Frank Farrell finds Tony, the town bully, annoying Helen, the Bearcat cheerleader. Helen is trying to get her brother Jim away from Tony and his influence. When Frank arrived on the scene, Tony, who is used to running things his own way, started in to settle the interference with his fist. However, when he rushed at Frank, something seemed to happen awfully quick because Tony hit the ground as Frank twisted his arm. Tony, with all the fight gone from him for the moment, went on his way, swearing that he would get even with Frank Farrell. As our scene opens now, we find Frank on the player's bench ready for practice. A few youngsters are kicking a football around the field. They see Frank and rush up to him. Let's listen. Come on, Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. Hello, everybody. How are you? Tell me, how's your foot? Boy, it's swell. I'm sure getting that kick of yours down pat. Now, wait a minute, Chubby. Let me ask him. Say, Frank. Didn't you smash Tony's jaw and break his nose and black his eye with just a simple twist of the wrist? Hey, just a minute. Where'd you get all this stuff? My brother told me that Tony ran at you, and the next thing anyone knew, Tony was flat on his back and stayed there, too. Said he was sure glad you did. But you better look out, because Tony's a mean guy, and he's got a lot of cops that are his friends. Oh, Frank Farrell don't have to worry about Tony or the cops. Frank can look a dozen of them like Tony. When you can put them down like Frank does, you don't have to worry about anybody. Maybe so. But my brother said that Tony would frame Frank some way and do something to him when he ain't looking. You better watch him, Frank. All right, fellas. Thanks for the good advice. But I'll take care of myself somehow. As far as Tony's concerned, he's not quite as bad as he's painted. Yes, he is, Frank. They say that Tony beat up two boys at the dance last Saturday night. When I grow up, I'm going to be a scrapper, and then I'll show Tony a thing or two. Now, wait a minute. None of you want to grow up to be fighters. You've heard the coach say time and time again that a real man stays away from fights whenever he can. Now, that doesn't mean that you ought to be a coward, but you shouldn't go around with a chip on your shoulder hunting trouble. The coach says right now, while you're young, is the time to build strong, healthy bodies and to learn to protect yourself when it's necessary. You keep right on listening to the coach. He's the greatest guy around the school. But the coach says sometimes you may have to fight. Well, what he means is never be a bully. A bully who's always going around looking for trouble usually finds it. And sooner or later, someone who's a whole lot better than he is, it takes it out of him for good. The coach wants you to be strong and healthy and on your toes, so that when you grow up, you'll be a top-notcher. Sure, that's what I'm going to be. But say, Frank, teach me how you upset a guy real quick, like you did Tony. I'd sure like to learn that right now. Well, maybe I will someday. I'll think it over. Hot dog. Oh, boy, 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 I could use it. Look, here comes Spud and Helen. Spud is cuckoo about Helen, and she's cuckoo about somebody else. Hey, where do you gather all your gossip, Tommy? Well, my sister says so. <laughs> I guess you know who she's cuckoo about, all right. Frank Farrell, that's his. <laughs> hey, you guys, that's enough of that. You're a fine bunch of pals. Hi, Spud. Don't you think I ever get jealous? Oh, forget it, you. Go on home and wash your neck. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Hey, well, we've been looking for you. Oh, what is this? The Council of War? Has Frank been giving you a workout? No, he's been giving us good advice. He says the guy is crazy if he has a girl. He says I'll make a wreck of you in no time. He said Spud is a good example of what a girl can do to a guy. Oh, say, is that so? Where do you get that kind of talk, guy, you little old horn toad you? A wreck, am I? Say, I'm the best-looking wreck that you ever saw. Yeah, <laughs> oh, cut it out. Fine pal you are, Frank, uh, t- t- uh, talking like that behind my back. Well, Mr. Frank Farrell, you seem to know a lot about everything, don't you? Hey, wait just a minute. Give me a chance. These kids are just razzing me. I didn't say anything like that at all. Now, listen, Tommy, you square me up. You tell Helen and Spud the truth about all this. Oh, Frank didn't say anything. But Floyd's sister said that Spud was nuts about you and that you were nuts about somebody else. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, say, I am not nuts. Where do you get that kind of talk? You tell your sister that. She's the one that's nuts. <laughs> She's crazy, too. That's all. Spud's a great lover. Yeah. <laughs> say, you guys, cut out this kind of talk, you little laughing hyenas, you. Now, go on, get out here before I, before, I tell you, uh, before I tell you what I think of you. Now, go on, get out, get out, get out. Oh, Spud, for goodness sake, be quiet. 
Can't you see they're just teasing you? Why, sure I can see they're teasing me. <laughs> Boy, they're teasing you, too. Only you haven't got brains enough to know it. <laughs> go on, get out of here, you guys. Go on, beat it. Spud. Spud's got a girl. Oh, Spud's a lady. Oh, George. go on, get out of here. Hey, hey, now listen, you guys. On your way or I'm off all of you. All right, Frank. So long, Spud. Bye, Helen. Go on, oh, go on home. <laughs> God, those guys, I'm going to kill one of them someday. <laughs> Frank, have you seen Tony today? No, no sign of him. He's been making threats against you, and he says he's going to get even with you. Yeah, boy, listen, he was downtown last night, uh, and he said that you didn't hit him with your fist. He said that you used a pair of knucks on him and tried to break his arm. So that's what he thinks, huh? Jim said several of the boys took it up and said they saw it all, and they told Tony that you were just too fast for him, that you had him on the ground before he could hit you. Yeah, and you know what he said? He said that you weren't big enough to floor him in a real fight, and that he'd show everybody in town how a real guy really fights. Boy, then he punched Bob in the nose before Bob had a chance to get on his feet. And when Glenn Harris got up and stopped him... Yeah, you know what he did? Tony hit Glenn with a billiard cue. Oh, Frank, Tony is so unfair. I'm sorry you had that trouble with him, and it was all on my account, too. Don't let that worry, Helen. Tony knows good and well that I didn't use knucks on him. If he doesn't let you alone, I'll show him just how I did it again. Oh, I know you can take care of yourself in a fair fight, Frank, but Tony doesn't play fair. Well, don't you worry about that, Helen. I can take care of myself. Say, here comes the coach and some of the fellas i got to get busy. Okay, you youngsters, let's beat it now. We've got to practice. Hey, Jim, all the boys ready? Just about, Coach. Well, I want to speak to Jim a minute. You be careful, Frank. Coming, Spun? No, no, i got to get a bucket of water for these imitation athletes here. <laughs> Say, if you need any help, Frank, boys, just call on me. Next to you, I'm the fastest guy in this town. So long. Hello, Frank. Hello, Coach. Say, Frank, I'm sorry you had that trouble, Tony. Oh, I know you gave him just what he had coming, but... Well, stay away from this fighting if you can. In the ring, okay. But fighting out on the street corner is no good. I'm sorry, Coach, that it had to happen, but I had to stop him and stop him quick. You know Tony's reputation as a fighter. He tries to hit first, and the first blow is half the battle. Yeah, you're right about that. The only thing, though, Frank... Well, everyone isn't as clean a fighter as you are, kid. Now watch him closely. I don't think he'll bother you anymore when you're watching him, but... Be careful when you turn your back. Well, I don't want any trouble with Tony, but I'm not going too far out of my way for him. You know, that boy is an example of what wrong companions can do for you, Frank. Pick the right kind of fellas to run around with. Live clean and honestly, and it'll mean plenty to you later on. It's that straight living that lets you stay at the top with the fellas on our team, Frank. I hope you keep on living just that way. Well, it hasn't disagreed with me so far, Coach. Uh, just stick to that business, kid. You know, two years ago, Tony was on this very team here. Playing a good game. Well, he left school and went into the city for a while. He got in with the wrong class of people, and it looks to me as though he's going from bad to worse. I don't know who he's mixed up with here in town, but he seems to have some influence back of him. Well, I'll take care of myself, Coach. I'm not afraid of Tony. Yeah, I understand that perfectly, Frank. Just stand your ground. But don't go out looking for trouble. I won't. I never have. I know you haven't. You're okay, Frank. Hey. Hey, you. What kind of a catch do you call that? Jim, throw me that ball. Hey, yeah, coach. All right, Joe. Now, here, try that again. I want you to catch a few of these low ones. You know, quarterbacks don't always throw them in your hand. Hello, Frank. I sure want to thank you for taking up my fight yesterday. It wasn't your fight I took up, Jim. Tony was bothering your sister, and it didn't look good to me. I meant what I said to him, and I guess the truth hurt him. I guess you think I'm yellow for not protecting my sister, but you see... Well, I, uh... All right, out with it, Jim. I'm waiting to hear it. Well, it's something I can't tell you right now. Listen, Jim, you're my friend. And I think your sister's a great girl. I've been watching both of you lately, and I know you've got her plenty worried. Oh, sis worries about the least little thing. I'm all right. She doesn't need to worry about me. Well, Jim, you've got something on your mind, and it's getting into your game. You used to be our fastest back. I found right tackle off guard twice yesterday... My signals would have sent you through that weak spot. We opened the way for you both times. But you hit the line instead and lost ground. If you had a followed signals and carried the ball where you should, you'd have made nice gains. I, uh, I must have been kind of mixed up, I guess. I just had a bad day. Your game was plenty bad. And I know the coach has been watching you pretty close lately. Has he said anything? And you know how he is. He's just like a clam until he's ready to do something, and then he does it. He doesn't do any talking. Say... What did Tony want to see you about? He acted like it was pretty important. Oh, it was nothing at all. Well, a little business transaction, that's all. A business transaction? 
For the love of Pete, Jim, you're not getting mixed up with him, are you? No, no, of course not. It's, it's really nothing. You wouldn't understand, Frank. Jim, I understand this much. He's got you worried. You were watching Tony and the man with him all during the game yesterday. Oh, you're nuts. Why should I be watching him? And why should you be watching me? I can take care of myself. I don't need a keeper. Let me give you a tip. You'd better watch Tony a little bit yourself. Oh, what are you all burned up about, Jim? I'm only trying to help you. I'm not trying to butt into your business. Hey, come on, let's go. They're getting ready for practice. All right, fellas. Now listen. I want to see some teamwork today. Why, these kids on the sidelines could show any of you up the way you were going yesterday. All right, now let's get busy. Oh, wait a minute. You looking for somebody, mister? Yeah, just a minute. I want to kind of talk to you just for... You're the coach of this uh, team, are you? That's right. Who do you want to see? Well, I'm looking for somebody. I... Which one of you kids is uh, Frank Farrell? Right here, sir. What is it? Yeah? You're Frank Farrell, huh? Yes, sir. Listen, buddy. I got a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? Well, what have I done? What have you done? You ought to know. You know good and well what you've done. Assault and battery, that's what. Kind of a serious charge when you use brass knucks on a victim, young fella. Oh, now, look here, officer. That's why you can't take just this Just a boy. minute, just a minute, you pipe down. I don't want to hear nothing out of you at all. Let him tell it to the judge. Come on, you. Has Tony started his underhanded work? We know that Frank can't be accused of assault and battery when he merely defended himself. Can Frank prove his innocence? Or will Tony's influence cause Frank to suffer unjust punishment? Don't miss Frank Farrell in his next episode.